All right, everybody. I'm now joined by Caleb Baberger, who just made his debut for the Giants just uh, not that long ago during this crazy 2020 COVID season. Caleb, thanks for taking the time. Yeah, thanks for having me, Sam. So I'm really excited to talk about your career. So let's start at the beginning. You, your college days, you play for Jackson College in Indiana. Well, what was that kind of college amateur time like being a, a dominant player there? Um, it was it was cool. I felt like a really – well, I got there and I felt like a small fish in a big pond. And then by the time I left uh, junior college, I felt like a big fish in a small pond. I went to Indiana where I was back to feeling like – a small fish in a big pond. And by the time I left there, I felt like a big, a big fish in a small pond. So you definitely had that, that growth there. Was there anything specific that really made you kind of go from small fish to big fish, you know, through your uh, baseball development? I would say my first, my first two years at the junior college, um, it was just kind of getting bigger and stronger, lifting weights, kind of growing into my body. Um, for sure. I was a little bit undersized, I guess. Uh, coming out of high school, I was like 6'1", 170. Mm -hmm. And then by the time I left junior college, I was 6'3", 200 pounds. Um, so I put on about 30 pounds and grew a couple inches too. So, And then when I went to Indiana, it was like my pitching ability was there. It was more the mental side that I kind of had to like grow with and kind of fight through some adversity like out on the baseball field, you know, like facing a little bit or not a little bit, but a lot more challenging hitters at the D1 level mm -hmm. than like a junior college in Michigan. So the Giants, they take notice of this, both the mental and physical growth. They select you in the ninth round back in 2016. What was that draft process like? Did you know you were going to be selected? And do you know it was going to be the Giants? I didn't know it was going to be the Giants. I had a pretty good idea. Um, I was going to be drafted. I met with every team except for the Astros um, before the draft. Um, so I kind of had a feeling I was going to get drafted. At least I was hoping, hoping so. Um, and then... I kind of waited all, all of day two until about like the eighth round. And then I, my phones were blowing up from like every team. It seemed like they're like, Oh, we want to take you in the ninth round. Like, will this work? Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, call my agent. Like, <laughs> this isn't for me. Like I told everybody, just call him. Like he'll deal with it and, and so forth. So the Astros, I'm hearing that, that is that going to be the rival game we have to look forward to? <laughs> no, I don't hold any bad blood against them. I think everyone hates them now. So like for me to hate them for a reason, like that's not even a big deal anymore. You had the grudge going way back, but uh, it's all good. You get you selected, and you get called up to uh, you know, the spring training now. Tw back before COVID, you made your first major league spring training. What was that camp like? You know, were you just feeling like the small fish again, or did you kind of feel like you had that growth after you know four years in the minors? Uh, I definitely was more confident in my abilities. Um, I think then. Than in previous years, for sure. I know I put a lot of work in the off season and like not getting a big league spring training invite um, in the spring was just, it was kind of whatever. Um, I was kind of just over it at that point. I wasn't going to hold any like grudges or bad blood because of it. Um, I understand like how this game works and it's definitely a business more than anything. So like there were some guys who had to go instead of me and I was totally, totally fine with that. Um, I was just happy to get the opportunity to go to the second one. So everything shuts down. What 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 happened right right when that happened back in March? Did you stay in Arizona? What was your mindset like? Because I understand you still want to you know practice and still you know perfect your craft even though everything's changing. Yeah, I was I was kind of hopeful that we'd only be shut down for a little bit and not <laughs> as long as we were. So I was like, oh, I'm just gonna stay out here, and I ended up finding the gym. Um, and then before I knew it, we were already through um, June, and I was like, wow, like <laughs> we're still not playing baseball yet. It's been a couple months. So I just stayed out in Arizona the whole time and was training at a facility. Yeah, and then summer summer camp is announced. You're going to be going back to your home city. So you come here to San Francisco. And can you walk me through what it's like, you know, doing spring training at a major league field with no fans? What, what was that whole thing like? It was awesome. I mean, the first day I walked into Oracle um, – it's, it's just breathtaking like it's a beautiful stadium and be able to see it in like a baseball stance as opposed to like i've only seen it one other time and that was when we all got drafted in 16 they brought us to like december camp but to be able to see it in a baseball aspect was just unbelievable you know i got chills the first day i walked through it and you know it was just awesome yeah that's very cool and did you know at that time how you, how you were going to be utilized being at camp there do you want to be a starter relief the closing was that on your mind at all 
I had no idea. I mean, I've always been a starter pretty much. I've had some relief appearances in the minors, but never like enough to kind of figure out that was the role to be established. So coming into camp, I was just, you know, I was just happy to be there and get an opportunity to kind of show my stuff. And then after I threw my first outing, uh, one of the pitching coaches came up to me and was like, hey, like, you're probably going to be a bullpen guy um, on this team. And I didn't know if that was like foreshadowing to what was going to happen or if that was just like, this is what we see for the year. So I was like, okay, like, that's fine. Like, it's only a 60 game season. Maybe I'll get a shot at some point to like come up and like get some innings out of the bullpen and help the team. Yeah, hinting at there, a potential role, you know, you'll take it there, uh, being with the major league club. But before we talk about that debut, what was it like in spring training, just living as a person? Were you Did you have a place here in the city? Were you eating out, taking out? What, what was that like living for three weeks here in a brand new city with, while playing major league baseball? Well, they put us up in a hotel like the Giants put everyone up who didn't have like a place. So they were really good with that, taking care of us. Um, it was a phenomenal, phenomenal stay. Like everything was pretty, pretty um, well taken care of. I'd say, you know, we were all kind of, we we're the only ones there. Everything was kind of locked down, which is really nice. Didn't have to worry about anything. Um, as far as like the food situation goes, I door dashed every single day. It felt <laughs> like so. I mean, there was nothing else to do. I couldn't cook or like, you know, I didn't want to go out and kind of risk like getting, myself infected and then jeopardizing the whole team so for me it was it was a no-brainer just kind of stay indoors like I was either at the field or I was in my hotel room I gotta ask him what was the go-to DoorDash meal then if you had it so often I got Bel Campo a lot I don't even know if I'm saying it right um I didn't maybe it's Campo Campo regardless uh I got that probably like five days in a row when I first got there um, it's just really good. They had like a little box where I could get like chicken and a steak. And then I got some like potatoes with it every day. And it was, oh, it was so good. I ordered it at least 10 times in the span of that month or 20 some days, however long I was there. Wow. You're making me hungry with that. That sounds, that sounds pretty good. I'll have to try that out. Um, so, so moving on, then you Get, you get the call up. I, I heard that, you know, story about, you know, going to the manager's office. And we got a clip here then of the debut here against the Dodgers <laughs> of all teams, the best best team, World Series favorite, if I, if I can say that. W- were you a little scared maybe facing that loaded lineup, just initially going out there for the first time? The day I pitched, no. The first two days, I would say, yeah. I was definitely <laughs> in my head about it the first two days. And then I kind of, like, I, ta- I remember getting home on – Friday night and kind of talking to myself and just being like, if you're going to pitch here, you can't be scared to go face these guys. <laughs> like they're just humans, just like you are. Yeah. They're really good. But at the end of the day, like they're also baseball players and they do everything just like everybody else. It's not like they're a machine or built differently. You know, they're, they're humans at the end of the day. So it's really to me taking that aspect into account and trying to take like the, the superstar element out of it really helped me like, calm down my adrenaline and kind of just pitch my game. Yeah, and he, he did a great job earning the win after two scoreless innings. What was what was the, the team response after that? Were you, were you able to kind of get that that shower afterwards or were you trying to kind of keep <laughs> distance with that COVID? No comment. <laughs> All right. A wink. We'll see. <laughs> So, uh, but also with the family aspect as well, I understand, uh, you know, no fans in the stands, but your family was able to watch a little bit. I know maybe on a, a dead iPhone here, but your uh, <laughs> brother sent out this tweet. What was the family re- re- uh, reaction like when you first told them and then when you, after you made the debut? Uh, well, I called my parents right after I found out. Well, actually, I went and played catch the day I found out, and then I went and called my parents. Um, I wanted to get my work in before I went and called them and whatever. <laughs> knowing that it was going to be emotional for everyone, especially like myself. Um, so I called them and they were all super pumped. Obviously, like it was a lifelong dream kind of coming through. And then uh, talking to my brother after the game, I guess they, he fought like, so his phone died about halfway through, but they were able to use one of his buddy's phones. And I guess they had like 40 people at the wedding, like huddling around the phone, <laughs> watching, watching my debut. So that was, that was a pretty cool story to hear. It's kind of, it's awesome to, have that much support from people back home and like some people that I don't really know that well either that were there that were cheering me on. Yeah, you got, you got to get the work in before you tell the parents to want to do a good job, of course. 
uh, that, that that's great. You know, it, you know, an unusual, a unique story. But you know, you can tell them, you know, the grandkids how you made your major league debut, Dodger <laughs> yeah. Stadium, no fans. Yeah, I'll probably. never forget it. Yeah, yeah, you never. No one else will be able to really have that story. You, you're one of the unique ones that be able to tell that. And you know, kind of staying with that debut. Did you listen to any pump up music beforehand? You said you played catch. Have you been listening <laughs> to any tunes to kind of keep you hyped up? No, no, I have not. Um, what, what, I, mean, I was you just been in the at? bullpen. I was just in the bullpen, hanging out and kind of going over the lineup. Um, I guess to clarify, I didn't call my parents the day I was pitching. I thought we were talking about um, like the day I found out I made the roster, not that I was mm-hmm. going to be pitching that day. Um, obviously, I didn't run in the locker room and I call my parents before the <laughs> yeah. game. Hey, I'm going to throw today. Um, I'm going out right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah no. Um, but no, I'm not like a big pump up music guy. Uh, to be honest, you know. I, especially out of the bullpen, it's kind of difficult because there's not really like a set routine that you can get in like right before you walk out, like maybe I'll get stretched or something. But other than that, like I'm just kind of going to the bullpen and kind of watching the game and seeing what spots I think I would match up with. I was able to watch the first couple games and see the way like I know our starters were on limited pitch counts um, for the first few games. So it was it was easier for me then to kind of map out where I was going to come in. I had a pretty good feeling about like the third inning that I was probably going to come in to face the top of the lineup um the third time through so i was kind of like mentally preparing that way to get ready for muncie and the rest of the all-stars i guess that followed yeah i i I, i'm a little i'm still a little little (laughs) shocked that wow how good job you did handling those all-stars uh congratulations again with that so now with the team you're on of course you're on your first road trip out of the state of california facing the rockies what what is life like on the road now under COVID compared to what you had in the minors? Um, I mean, I guess it, it doesn't compare at all, to be honest. The hotels are way nicer and the food's way better. Everything is just way better. And it's funny. Some guys are like, oh, it's not as good this year. And and like, you'll experience it more next year. It'll be a lot more fun. And I'm like, hey, I'm having a great time. You know, <laughs> like I get to eat good food every day and I get to sleep in a nice hotel room by myself. Like I'm, I'm fine. Like I don't need a whole lot. <laughs> um and uh, but yeah anyway go, yeah, go ahead go ahead um no, I, I was yeah kidding. i mean it's just yeah. kind of like we don't do anything you know we we go to the field and we come back to the hotel and everybody sits in our hotel room with all the protocols so it's it's kind of boring but you know i think we're all we all understand the severity of what's going on right now and we understand there's been a couple teams that have had some positive cases and we all kind of get the feeling where if there's a couple more it might jeopardize the season so i think everybody's kind of doing their their best due diligence to keep them and everyone else around them safe so we can continue to play baseball yes and uh just one thing with the the hotel situation kapler had mentioned that you guys actually had like a ballroom or like an outdoor area was that something that you guys still have in colorado to try to build that camaraderie in these challenging times uh not here no because the hotel is open to the public Um, as well so it's not just us here as in when we were in california it was just us in the hotel so we were able to kind of have like a room set up for food. And then there's like a little courtyard where we kind of go out and eat and hang out with the guys just outside. Yeah. So, well, that's, uh, that's pretty much all I got. Is there any other cool little bullpen antics now that you're kind of one of the guys there, or is it just pretty much just watching the game? <laughs> it's pretty much just watching the game. And I mean, we're not like super serious all the time, obviously like there's some jokes and we joke around a little bit, but nothing crazy. We're not doing anything crazy out there. Next, yeah, I know college baseball is known for you know the cups and you get you get the <laughs> everything going yeah, no, on. I didn't know. No, we're a little past that at this level, I think. Yeah. Well, Caleb, thanks for taking the time. Really appreciate it. Best of luck the rest of the season. Um, you know, rookie year and try to enjoy the best of best of it you can. I will. Thanks for having me, Sam.